Hey everybody, I'm Gergay. Today I wanted to show a new way of exploring with Viscom. I'm just gonna create a new file. Let's start in the studio. We're gonna set up this square canvas here and put out a symmetry plane since I wanna create a, um, a basic gaming chair form that we can explore. I can either just keep it in render for a uh, more precise, longer process, or I can also go to live render where I can just uh, have a conversation with the tool as well as I do the sketch. So here we want to create a um, minimalist gaming chair and that should be enough of a prompt. I'll pop out this window and I'll just place it here, something like that. In now let's, let's make a quick sketch out of a gaming chair. Okay, awesome. After exploring the actual sketching phase with the live render option, I will just close this down now and I actually jump to render where I can have a more precise rendering right on. So let's use something higher like 85% influence here. And then we can say that gray modern gaming chair, that should be good. Okay, this one is already quite nice, but we can choose between a few of these options. I'm gonna add this. And I will also sketch in a few details here. Like I want this part to be quite textured. So I can add a sort of pattern here. You can hold down shift for straight lines. Let's regenerate on top of this. Nice, nice. We get a bit more definition. We get a bit more patterns there. I'm going to add this one. And last thing is I might just fix at this middle part. So I grab magic erase. And if you want to have alternative surfacing here, we can just magic erase a certain cut line or surface. In this case, if I want to make a continuous surface, I can just remove this line with magic eraser. That should be enough. We can do things like removing these holes that we probably won't need. Now we have a nice chair concept. After this one, I'm going to now go out to the workbench to actually explore this a bit more. So on the workbench, you, if you click on the image, you can find a plus icon and you can either click on it or drag the plus icon. And this will allow you to just see the options that you can do with this image. For instance, you can create different renderings. You can start mixing it together, blending it visually with different images. You can animate. And now there is modify, which is the new feature for exploring. If I click on modify, I have a few options that we're all going to explore here. First of all, let's actually start with form variation. That will be good for just generating a lot of alternatives with a bit of extra control here. So if you have a base form, now we can see that we have geometric versus organic and complex versus simple. We can just place this marker anywhere. For example, at this quadrant of uh, geometric and simple, and then it will create a modified image like this. It will push it towards a geometric simple aesthetic. And then if I go up here, geometric complex, and each time I click on generate, it will always create a new image. So I can just click and generate, click generate. Let's see some extremes as well. Click generate. So we can keep going like this. In the meantime, while form variation will load, I can also attach a different modification to it. That will be change expression, which is going to be quite similar to form variation as well. This is mainly tuned for character design. So for example, if I want to change the expression of this character, I can just choose an expression here and then it will try to create the character with that expression. But we can also use it for exploring the shape itself. So for example, we can push it towards a calmer aesthetic or let's do a silly option here, indifferent. Let's do an angry one. And the last one is pretty fun because here we can just enter a custom expression as well. So I can make an aggressive one, a dynamic one. So these will load for a little bit as, as well. And in the meantime, I can just check on this form exploration that we did up here. Okay, we get some like quite cool alternative interpretations here. If you select the images, it will say that this is a geometric simple this is a geometric, very complex. So it will tell you the spec that you used. So I will just select all of them and we can see when we can actually see the specs this way. So this was the organic complex. If we can see now it got much more like curvature to it. It's an organic simple option as well. This is very extreme, very geometric, very complex. But so it's quite cool to just spectate these. Now, if I modify the original rendering here, for example, if I want to like make it a bit richer in texture, I can definitely start with an image that has richer textures to it, or I can apply these textures to it. And then that way the form exploration will also carry over this richer texture effect. So that's also something to, to play around with. 
And from these options, I will now just want to choose one, which I like the most from the shapes perspective. It's going to be this option, which was a ge geometric and complex alternative. Now the next thing I can do with this, with modify, is that I can click on it once again, and we can actually explore different views from this chair. So this will be a very useful functionality when we want to explore the other angles. So I can click on new view and this will be a, a cubicle interface where I can determine which views I want to see. In this case, I'll just click on the top view and generate. I can find the three quarter views as well. So I just click on them and I generate all of these different angles and views. We can also find the hidden views at the drop down menu, for example, the bottom one. So I just generate that option too here. And these will also load for a little bit. In the meantime, I can also just show the last modification here or the last type of modify, which is going to be extract material. This is also something that we can just very easily plug it into our workflow. If we explore an interesting like material on this sheet, then we can now use extract material to determine which is the actual area that we want to focus on. So I can just position my cursor here. And for instance, let's, uh, let's grab this texture or material, and then I can just simply click generate. If I want to be more descriptive, I can also say that this is gray fabric. Sometimes it can help if you define the material this way. For now, I will just take one of these and add it to asset libraries. We can see that we generated the top view, this uh, three quarter view, try to do the back view as well, the side views. One thing that these can be useful for is that maybe we can grab like three or four images, which is accurately representing the shape and we can generate a multi view 3D model out of them. So in this case, I will select just these four images. And now I can generate multi view 3D out of these. Currently to do that, I would probably just export or download these images or either copy, copy these one by one into the studio instance. I will quickly just uh, download the images. Now I will copy back all the other angles. And now I can start utilizing all of these views to actually generate a more comprehensive 3D model. I think I will not use the bottom one. It doesn't add too much to us. So I will just delete it. So clicking on the first one, shift click to the last one. And then we selected these four visible layers that we can now use to generate a multi-view 3D, which will be more comprehensive thanks to the other angles. That is why generating the multi-view can be a really good option amongst many other things. So getting back to extract material. So here I explored some interesting seed options and then extracted materials out of it. For instance, if I have a material that I want to keep reusing, I can click on it, three dot menu, add to asset libraries. And instead of this file, I have to select my library so that I can keep reusing it every single file that I create. So if I go back to the other file here, now I can actually apply that to our gaming chair. So I'm going to go inside this image where the 3D models are loading here. And now I can find this under my library. So I just added this material here and I will just now trans transfer it onto the product. I'm going to use auto selection to just define the areas where I want to apply that material. So I'll select the upholstery here. Add to the selection by holding down shift a few times, holding down option to remove from the selection. And I would usually also offset the mask a little bit just to get a more precise mask that, that conveys nicely everything. And now I can actually like also prompt for this material saying that it's an uh, inflatable gaming chair. And then the specific material is gonna, gonna be driven by this material reference image. So this would be a direct and practical use case for the extract material feature that we can just utilize it inside the studio to, to now change the materials of the actual seat here. I will hide this layer now and just uh, check on the actual generated 3D model. Here we go, we got our little comprehensive, very nice little gaming chair that we can now also utilize as 3D data after exporting the actual 3D model in all of these different formats. One thing that we also added, if you do want to modify these meshes in a polymodeling software, you can always click on the generate with quad topology here. And that will ensure that you get a, uh, not a messy triangle topology, but a, a nice quad topology. As a last option, we can also place this concept into an environment and then we can also animate it. So that will be the last step here. I'm just gonna uh, grab this image 
uh, first of all, I'm going to place this on a landscape canvas because the turbo animation will only handle the landscape canvas and I want to use that. So I just set up a new landscape canvas, Control C, Control V. We can also do a background remove to get rid of this distracting background from a different aspect ratio. There we go. Uh, so before I do the environment switch, this is a good place to put in logos, put in graphics or more accurate materials, meshes. So I'm just going to copy Control V in a simple symbol that will be a logo for us. Okay, that's going to be nice. I can also add this to that below, perhaps. Now, a few things that I can now also do is that I have control over the colors here and the lights also. If you click on the layer, there is a layer adjustments panel. And here we can control the light and colors. So we have a basic like HSL slider. As an example, I could make this one dark or I could also, for example, desaturate this. So what I'm going to do here and I can also like set a, a different hue, hue as well if I want. And then I can have uh, different colors to it as well. But what I would do in this case is I just desaturate them and try them in a darker setting. Because this one is going to be a little bit more subtle. And I do the same here, clicking on the opacity settings layer adjustments. And then putting the exposure all the way down should be enough here. Uh, like that and so we placed on a more specific logo as i said this can be a text too or pattern and now we are ready for the environment switch so i can click on the references and navigate to environment here i can upload an image so i will just paste in a scene and we can say gaming chair in a room in front of a table and click enter some of them are a little bit dark but this one is going to be perfect it will be a perfect assist for the animation feature so I'm going to jump outside to the workbench view. And now we can make a, a persona interaction animation as well. So here I can click on animate and I'll use the turbo option since that's going to be a bit faster. And I can just describe the motion that I want to see. Man sits down on the chair. This can be one animation. What we can always of course also experiment with if we like any other alternative shapes here. Maybe we can also like explore a turntable animation. That one looks really cool. It's a very like geometric approach, but here I can also like animate this and I can say chair is rotating around just to make a quick turntable rotation scene out of this. Here we get our turntable rotation for that more interesting seat concept as well. So we can also stop it this way and then grab these views if you want to have a, a multi-view 3D. Okay, let's see the uh, first animation man sits down on the chair we can stop it at any point and then we can also make a uh, static image out of it so i just uh, copy this out and here we go awesome i just quickly set up the workflow and that will conclude our exploration process here where we start from a sketch we make a base rendering and then with the help of modify we have a lot of ways to explore alternative options according to different form instructions then we can also extract materials and then we can also pick one and explore the other angles pretty easily with the help of modify and that led us to our concept here that we could place in a different environment with logos applied and then we can make sort of the animations as well to conclude the scene and the workflow well thank you for watching let me know if you have any questions regarding these capabilities and uh, see you next time bye